Hey guys, so this year for Christmas, I wanted to make my friends a unique gift, but the issue is that I'm a procrastinator and I leave everything till the end. So I'm gonna need to speed run it and I'm gonna try and record my process. So let's get started. I found a great file on Etsy by user MaxCraft. He did a really good job at designing this helmet, so make sure to check out his profile if you get a chance. I loaded up the files into my slicer and started the printing process. After printing out the main parts of the helmet, I took a 60 grit sandpaper to scuff up any of the areas that need to be glued together. I used super glue and an accelerator to strengthen the bond. After that, I quickly removed most of the layer lines using a DeWalt palm sander. It's easy to burn through your part with the palm sander, so ensure you don't leave it in one spot for too long. After sanding, I added wood filler to the sides and the top to cover up most of the major imperfections. Once the wood filler is dry, I used a 400 grit sandpaper to remove most of the high spots, but leave a thin enough layer to work with. I then applied Bondo over the wood filler, since it can be wet sanded and leaves an overall better surface quality. To sand the Bondo, I used a sanding sponge with a 400 grit sandpaper over it. This is so I wouldn't apply too much pressure in one spot. Remember to work in a well-ventilated area and wear a respirator when working with Bondo. Once I finished, I checked the part to make sure that there were no areas needed to be filled before I moved on to XTC3D. XTC3D is a two-part brush-on epoxy. It does a good job at strengthening your part, covering any layer lines, and leveling the surface. The epoxy begins to set after about five minutes, so you need to be quick once you have the mixture ready. I made sure to cover my work area and have good lighting. Otherwise, you might miss spots where the epoxy begins to pool. After I apply it to every part, I go back and spread the epoxy as needed. Overall, the result was good, but there were some areas where I didn't apply it correctly. So I'll need to go back and sand down the drips and high spots. Once that's done, I'll apply a thin layer of primer just to reveal any last imperfections before I glue the parts together. After that round of sanding and primer, I'm happy with the part, so now I'll move on to gluing the back of the helmet to the main dome. Just like last time, I'll scuff up both sides of the print before gluing it together. It's worth noting that I welded the two main parts of the helmet body together using a soldering iron, ensuring it will have a permanent bond. Before permanently gluing the face shield area, I did a quick dry run with hot glue just to get an idea of the distance between each face shield section. I recommend that as you're gluing the parts in, to look at it from as many angles as possible, making sure that each piece is straight and parallel to each other. Additionally, I added five minute epoxy over the super glue just in case my glue up job wasn't as adequate. After gluing on the rest of the face shield area, I'll move on to the small details like the tube in the back. I used my calipers to space out both of the tube holders, and then I added on the main body of the tube and the cap. After priming the helmet, I realized that I forgot a couple of small details on the cheeks and the back of the helmet, so I'll go back and add those before getting it ready for painting. I glued in all the small details around the helmet, and then added another layer of primer. So now it's ready for the painting phase. My brother was kind enough to help me paint the helmets with his airbrush. So he'll be handling the painting process. However, keep in mind if you don't have an airbrush, you can definitely get good results just using spray cans. He started off by using two coats of Tamiya Gloss Black. This was followed up with two coats of Tamiya Metallic Brown. This helps give the metallic colors a better shine and look. To create shadows and add definition to the crevices, he used Tamiya Bronze and it was sprayed in areas where dirt and grime would naturally accumulate. A mixture of dark brown was added and lightly tapped off to give the helmet a dirty and worn look. He then used a coat of pledge to seal in the paint. To add to the weathering, a layer of brown oil paint was added to the low areas. Leave plenty of time to let the oil paint dry before moving on to the dry brushing. Dry brushing was done with Tamiya Silver. With a little bit of paint on the brush, you hit the high spots of an area to give it a metallic and worn look. We used Blood for the Blood God paint from Citadel to add a splatter to the side of the helmet. 
I then wired up 4 green LEDs I got on Amazon and hooked them up to a 12 volt battery. I'll hold these in place with hot glue and put the battery pack in the back of the helmet where there's a gap. I cable managed inside of the helmet and painted the inside black. I used a split wire loom tubing to hide all the cables and make the overall build cleaner. For the plexiglass, I cut down a 2x4 piece of scrap I had laying around and shaped it to the contour of the helmet. Put the plexiglass over the wood in the toaster oven and after about 30 seconds or so, the plexiglass starts to form over the wood. The overall result was good, but I would suggest using a non-porous material if you don't want small imperfections forming on your plexiglass. This is a quick and easy solution if you don't have a vacuum forming machine, but hopefully I'll get around to making one in the future. I need two helmets, so I'll just repeat these steps to make another identical helmet. And now with the visors in place, here's the helmet all put together. I really wish I would have been able to put in more LEDs, but it's just kind of what I had laying around, and the LEDs show a lot more on their low light situations, so I'm pretty happy with it. I didn't really go into a lot of detail about post-processing this video, but if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer it in the comments or make a follow-up video. I had fun recording my progress, so I'll try and make these videos more often. In any case, I really appreciate you guys watching the video, and let me know what you think. Alright, so here's the end result. I think the helmets came out great and I learned a lot during this build process. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions for my next build video, and I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye!